Hello folks, my name is Leah Bonasage from the Master Lab Systems. Today we'll be looking at first API authorization with the Road BST Access Control, which is known as the RBAC. Okay, moving on. So let's look at the introduction to authorization and RBAC. So, first of all, in simple terms, the RBAC works slightly different. Well, the authorization basically works slightly different with the authentication. However, those two work hand in hand. So, in an authorization, an authorization determines what users can do after authentication. Also, it restricts access based on user roles and permissions. So, imagine you have authenticated, meaning you have logged into the system, and then after that, there comes authorization, which determines what you can do after all, which access, or which access do you have based on your own. That's how it works. Okay. So, let's look at now, what is role-based access control? So, a role-based access control is a security model that assigns roles to users. So, roles have specific permissions to access resources. So, for each role, has a specific permission, of course. So, and each permission is its associated role. Yes. So, for example, an admin definitely will have a full access to the overall system. While a user will definitely have a limited access. Same goes for the guest as well. So, meaning... I, as a user, I cannot have access to the admin page or to the admin operations. Same thing as a guest cannot have access to the user permit operations or admin operations for that matter. Okay, moving on. So, how does the role back, uh, role based access control works in Fast API? So, in a simple scenario, a user logs in with the normal credentials, which is a username and a password. So, a server bar authenticates and assigns a role based on the input you have provided, meaning on your credentials. So, each credentials will have an associated role. So, at this stage, a user have logged in with the valid credentials and then the system authenticates that and assigns a role based on your credentials. And then a server will generate a JSON web token, which is known as the JWT, and that information is being sent back to the client. So a client will then store that, and each time they send a request or, or for your resource in the server, the server verifies the token if it's still valid, and also checks the role which you have before granting you access or before authorizing your request. Okay. So let's look at this diagram for example. The client will log in normally with the accredited shards, which is a user and a password, and then the server validates that request. And if it's valid, the server will create a token and also assign that token to a specific role. So a client will then store that token. So each time they make a request to the server, the server will validate the token and checks the role they have and grant the access based on their credentials they provided. Okay, moving on. Okay, so now we will be looking at setting up the first API for JWT authentication using the RPCA. Okay, so what we need first, uh, so at this time again, we will be using the previous uh, a repo we created meaning we just we already have this so i will be adding on top okay so once after once we done that we'll test the role based access in the first api using the swagger schema and also using the different account which is the user account and the admin account okay so let's also look at the best practices for the rpc rpc Okay, so normally, it's important not to store tokens in a local storage and to use those HTTP and also using the HTTP password instead of the plain text. However, at this stage, we'll be using the plain text, of course. But anyway, let's first 
look at how we can see how this project get it to run then we'll come back and explain which is the best practices later okay so what i have here again i'll go to my id okay before my id let's first do a clear okay I do a clear and do a rr okay so again do a cd back just to show you again RR. okay so first uh previous video now we looked at creating this repo and creating a gwt using this account using this repo so i was just gonna add on top of that again so what do we have here on first of all last time we created a config which will store our secret key and the algorithm that we are using for our token generation and the token and the minutes that the token should expire okay so from there we have go to our main at this stage it's all empty but i got some snippets of course that i've extended for this demo okay let's first get uh okay let's first get the imports i'm just gonna get its speed so we don't have any confusion there okay so we get to the imports so of course if you unsure of again how we can how we created this repo please look again in my uh, playlist for some tutorials uh, which are covering this uh, previous session okay and so on okay so now if we take again let's say now we take uh, this one too okay so from here go back to our IDE okay paste that in here so for example, this is our users DB, which is in the format of a dictionary that contains a admin role and a user account. So this is basically a user and admin account and then a user account that has its own user role and admin is its own admin role. Okay, so from there, let's get the token creation function. Okay, so we first get to this function that is to create our token in the previous tutorial i explained as well these functions how they function how they work and the functionality of this method okay so now let's get to the one that generates the token for us which is the endpoint pass that one too and then let's do that so i added a little modification this one we already have it previously however this time we didn't have the role part so we needed to edit that one as well so that when the token is pre-generated it can be assigned to the desired role mm -hmm. so moving on as well we got that in so let's get the last uh okay so which is the last api endpoint we need which is the admin say imagine this one is to take us to the admin page of course only admins should be able to access uh, this endpoint okay so we have that one in there as well so what i will do now i'm just going to start up the project and again for this users db in a real scenario or in a production application of course you wouldn't have stored them there but I rather have a separate DB that you have an access to it where you can just query to your DB for each user or for each uh, account. Or maybe something similar to if we can say we create again a Python file called users DB. And then from this users DB, we just have this in a separate. We copy that, we paste it in the users db, which is the users db, and then from here we just create a reference. So from users db, import users db. So now we can still get to those users account. So imagine you have something similar to this one rather than storing those inside your application. Of course, in a production system, you weren't going to store them directly in your application. But either on a third party application or on a separate database system. Okay, so let's start up the project now. So 
Uh, okay, so since we can't directly start it here, let's do another CD to the first API project, QT, and then let's do a list again. Okay, so if I do a run, for example, so run and show you are in the direct directory when we are invoking the main, which is it have to be inside the main directory. Okay, so let's do a run. If we do that, okay, let's start it up. Okay, it's starting, folks. Okay, it looks like it has started. Okay, so we should be able to begin to test it. Okay, so if you go back to our browser and then do a fast API, which is is a bookmarked. Okay, as you can see, currently, but the Padlets unlocked, meaning we are not authorized yet. So let's go ahead. Meaning, if we use the token endpoint, that which should be the one to give us what a token and also a role for that token. So if we are using again the admin account, so the admin account or the admin role, the admin account contains the username and password and a role for that so let's go ahead and fill, use this one so if we use now the admin which is has the username and this password is the password so if we go there let's try it out okay so it's admin and then the password it says password okay so now let's Alright, let's authenticate. Execute. Okay. Okay, there we go, folks. As you can see, we are able to get our access token for that meaning we have authorized successfully. So let's go ahead and authorize the directly again. We can use the key itself, which is being generated, or we can still use the user name which is a uh, password so this time we'll use admin so let's use the password the password as password okay so let's authorize okay as you can see folks we have authenticated and authorized using the admin account so now if we go ahead so we should be able now to use the admin endpoint as you can see it means now you have authenticated so now you can be able to access that account that endpoint so let's go there so at this stage we are using the admin account meaning which is allowed to access this endpoint so meaning it should be it should work at this stage it should return our proper message mm -hmm. that we have logged in or welcome let's go ahead try it out let's execute well there we go, folks. As you can see, there is our return statement, a message welcome admin. So what we're gonna do now, we will use we will log out and re-authenticate using the user account this time. And then we'll try to access this admin again and look and see what's gonna happen. Okay, so if now we do a cancel, okay doing cancel so let's again go there so let's first log out so from logging out let's go ahead and get a token for our user account so since we use that mean we'll use user this time so user password is so password again so let's execute Okay, as you can see, folks, this is our generated token. So we can be able to authenticate again. So let's go in. So let's use the user account again and password. Is password. Okay, let's authorize. Okay, as you can see, we are logged in as well. So let's go ahead and test it now using what the admin point. So at this stage, we are using a user account in an admin page. Definitely, you shouldn't be able to get an access. While in a normal world, in a normal scenario, a user shouldn't be able to gain 
an access to an admin page so let's look at that now so let's try it out so since now we've authenticated using the user we shouldn't be able to gain access to that page or to that endpoint let's execute executed okay as you can see folks there it is an error 403 meaning we are forbidden to access that page okay so as you can see there is our error message forbidden admins only meaning only admins have access should be able to access that page so this is how a rule based access control works normally it works itself best in an application that serves as a multi-tier or in a multi-tier architecture whereby you have so many users that are using your systems and those users have to have different roles so for each for example in real world scenarios imagine in hospitals schools uh like uh, and there's quite a lot of scenarios whereby you can use the role based access control okay i think that should cover it folks uh so for any questions you might have please feel free to post them in the comment section again once last time let's first look ahead now our best practices for the rbc so okay in an RPC scenario, never store tokens in a local storage. As you can see, as we looked at how tokens are being generated, so another cool use is never store those local in a local storage. Only use HTTP, only cookies. Also use the hashed passwords instead of using the plain text. Also implement a fine grained dimension instead of a broad rules. Also use refresh tokens to manage session expiration securely you enable locking and monitoring for unauthorized access attempts so those are some best security practices we can ensure our application has especially when we have to go to live or go into production okay folks i will be ending here today if you have any questions please post those in the comment section i will answer those for you also if you like this video please comment and like and subscribe to my channel please please folks thank you so much cheers until next time peace out